Huge shout out to Hacker3751 for suggesting this video. I appreciate you guys for always coming and suggesting videos and giving me ideas. I do have all these guys in my notes for the most part, but I love to see you all share the same thought I share. So keep on coming. I appreciate you guys so much, man. And let's get to the video. What happened to 21 and 0 UFC bantamweight Thomas Almeida? Some of you may know Almeida because of his impressive record of 21 and 0 at one point in the UFC, but I bet a lot of you may know him from EA Sports UFC 2 as he was one of the funnest fighters to use in that game. You will see a bunch of my old UFC 2 footage in the background of this vid, but let's get into what happened to Thomas Almeida. Born on July 31st, 1991 in Sao Paulo, Brazil, the birthplace of fighters such as Anderson Silva and Charles Oliveira, 5'7 bantamweight Thomas Almeida was destined to become a fighter. Almeida's mother, Lucia Pinto, said growing up, Almeida didn't take insults from anyone, becoming another person and a strong person when challenged. He started in Muay Thai at the early age of 13 under head coach Marco Strigante. He was so into Muay Thai that he didn't even want to go to school full time anymore. Thomas knew he wanted to make fighting his livelihood. That is when he met Diego Lima, a coach at Legendary Shooter Boss Academy that housed USC greats such as Shogun Hua, Anson Silva, and Vangelay Silva, as well as a new breed led by Charles Oliveira, sporting a bleach blonde hair with a Shooter Boss logo tattooed on him. Lima encouraged Thomas to focus primarily on the sport of MMA and not Muay Thai if he wanted to make a living fight. He would be right at home doing Shooter Boss Academy, with Muay Thai being a heavy influence in the gym since the majority of the fighters there had extensive Muay Thai backgrounds. When you hear someone say a fighter comes from Shooter Box, you know what to expect from them. You will almost always see a fighter coming forward with a Blitzkrieg Muay Thai style, ready to blast knees, elbows, and kicks with reckless abandon since they aren't afraid of being taken down because of their very proficient Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills they learned at the gym as well. Thomas was a carbon copy of that style when you saw him fight. Coming forward trading with opponents, often getting the better of the exchanges. Thomas became a pro in May of 2011 at the age of 19, amassing a 17-0 record in a three-year span, with all of his wins coming by finish, 13 by KO, and 4 by submission. The man fought 8 times in 2012 alone. He competed primarily in his native Brazil and in Legacy FC, becoming the Legacy FC Bantamweight Champion with the first round KO of Kyle Machado. In June of 2014, shortly after winning the Legacy FC Bantamweight belt, Thomas was signed by the UFC, getting the call at the gym while training with friends. The then 23-year-old made his UFC debut at Fight Night 56 against Tom Gorman, winning by unanimous decision or was fight of the night. This was Almeida's first time ever going to a decision in 18 fights. He got back to his finishing ways against Eve Jabouin at UFC 186, winning by TKO in the first round, earning his first performance of the night bonus in the process, which was his second fight bonus overall. Just a few short months later, Almeida took on Brad Pickett in the instant classic at UFC 189. After being knocked down twice in the first round by Pickett, Thomas came back and knocked Pickett out with a nasty flying knee in the second round. Make that three post-fight bonuses for Almeida as he was once again awarded performance of the night for his highlight reel KO. To cap out the year 2015, Thomas Almeida would earn another KO victory folding Anthony Burchak with that right hand in the first round, throwing up fours as he walked off, symbolizing four straight wins in the UFC. The win over Burchak improved Thomas' record to an outstanding 21-0 while also earning his fourth consecutive post-fight bonus. Man, it's just something so dangerous about those big teeth, dark shades wearing, high cheekbone Brazilians. No racial, no racial, just a physical observation, but anywho, the win over Burchak set up the kind of fight you only see in MMA, as Thomas Almeida was set to take on fellow undefeated young prospect, Cody Garbrandt, who was 8-0 with seven knockouts. The two young hungry bantamweights, both 24 years of age, with a combined 23 KOs, main evented the fight night Las Vegas in May of 2016 with the finish imminent. In the fight, Almeida, a small minus 180 favorite, was noticeably at a disadvantage with young Cody showcasing some blistering speed and power. Almeida tried to trade back, but Cody got the better of every exchange, and the 2 minute and 12 second mark of the first round, Cody landed a huge right hand that crumbled Almeida. Two follow up hammer fists later, and Thomas Almeida was out, defeated for the first time in 22 fights dropping his record to 21-1. Cody was just too fast for Almeida. I don't think I've seen a fighter faster and more powerful than Prime Cody or Garbrandt. Almeida didn't have the speed to keep up or the chin to withstand the onslaught. Mostly all of Almeida's previous fights started out with him having to eat some shots to get going, but against Cody, he never answered back. Looking at Almeida's previous fights again, he always left pretty damaged. He was a freaking competitor too, having fought six times in less than two years before the Garbrandt fight. 
having 21 fights in total to Cody's eight. It was just a matter of time before someone cracked his chin with the fighting style he had. I mean, just take future Cody for example. He wanted to become Bantamweight champion, but after his grudge matches against TJ, where he decided to employ a similar fight style, he got caught and that chin has never been the same since. There's only so many striking wars you can have before you are the one getting KO'd. Almeida did bounce back though in his next fight against Alvin Morales later that year, but you can see the signs of a depleting chin in that fight. Every time Morales pressed forward with punches, Almeida would quickly backpedal away after getting hit instead of firing back like he would before the Grabran fight. Almeida eventually caught Morales with a big right hand late in the first that boosted his confidence against Morales as he tried to resort to his grappling. Early in the second round, Thomas hit Morales with a flurry of punches up against the fence, then folded him with a body shot securing a TKO finish and win his fifth and final UFC post fight bonus. It was also Almeida's last victory to date as he would lose four straight fights in the UFC. His activity slowed down over this span too as he dealt with injuries. He fought a competitor back and forth against Jimmy Rivera, losing by UD in his only fight of 2017. He was KO'd by Rob Fun when he returned for his only fight in 2018. He was supposed to fight Cheeto Vera in 2019. That would have been a great fight, but he pulled out due to an injury. He was then sidelined for over two years after it was revealed he needed multiple eye surgeries to correct his increasingly impaired vision. After successful surgery, Thomas was expected to come back against Alejandro Perez at UFC Fight Night 179 in October 2020, but Perez tested positive for the teenage flu and was replaced by featherweight Jonathan Martinez. The fight now a featherweight contest was moved a week later to the Ortega vs. Korean Zombie card. Thomas had made a loss by unanimous decision in a striking matchup where Jonathan was just a bit quicker and sharper on the feet and landed frequent counter punches against Almeida throughout the fight. Almeida returned at UFC 260 in 2021 in what was his last UFC fight and his last fight to date. Taking on the Sugar Show, Sean O'Malley looking to rebound after suffering his first pro loss to Cheeto Vera by TKO. In the fight, Sugar immediately took the center of the octagon to control range. The length of O'Malley was an impairing problem for Almeida from the jump. About three minutes into the first, O'Malley blasted Thomas with a left high kick, then dropped him with a follow-up left hand. Sugar thought it was a walk-off KO, but somehow Thomas survived. In the second round, Sean continued picking Almeida apart, but Almeida showed signs of life with some good leg kicks. O'Malley said leg kicks on and immediately came out in the third attacking the legs of Almeida. O'Malley got back to the handiwork, but it looked like Thomas was going to make it to a decision with commentary questioning O'Malley's decision to walk off in the first round, saying that that would be a lesson for him. Well, Sean rocked Thomas with a left hand with about a minute to go and slowly walked towards him as he fell and before commentary could critique his hesitation to finish again, O'Malley did what I can only describe as slam dunking on our boy Thomas. 14, 13, 14, back in front. Rock turned his corner inside! He made Yusuf Nurkic just scream his head. I mean, he just straight up posterized a down and made it with a right hand from the heavens. This loss dropped Almeida's record to 22 and 5. The UFC had made a demise not too long after Thomas's fourth straight loss and released him from his contract on October 21st, 2021. One thing about the UFC, they don't really have patience for losing streaks, especially when finishes start piling up. Unless your name is Sam Alvey, of course. To this day, over three years removed from his last fight, Thomas has yet to fight again, so what has he been doing? Well, Thomas has actually still been around the UFC, unbeknownst to many American fans taking part in the Brazilian commentary team on UFC Fight Pass for a number of recent events. He's still been in the gym at Shoot Boss alongside the likes of Charles Oliveira, and you can see him congratulating Charles multiple times on social media with throwback pics throughout his title reign. He has a training program you can subscribe to for $39 a month, where he teaches a plethora of fighting techniques. He was also recently at Extreme Court Tour in Las Vegas last month in August, training alongside Bellator Bantamweight champ Patchy Mix and young Bantamweight prospect Raul Rosa Jr. She wee wee. He must have been there training for a fight he had booked for the Art of Scrap promotion against 12 and 8 Taylor Moore on September 14th in a featherweight bout, but the fight fell through for an undisclosed reason. I actually found the event, and Taylor Moore took on replacement Eric Vo, beating him by orange triangle. Bro came out there guns a blazing, and he just started to support Eric. He even proposed to his girlfriend afterwards, so shout out to the soon-to-be Mr. and Mrs. Moore. If Amanda had made it to the fight, that would have been his first action since losing to O'Malley in 2021. And with the way Moore came out, if ring rust is a real thing, he may have caught our boy Thomas lacking. The fight with Moore has actually been rebooked all the way into next year at Artist Scrap 10 in April of 2025. That's a whole nother seven months before we can finally see Almeida back in action and what will be over four years since he last competed. Let's hope Thomas stays healthy and actually gets to compete again this time around. That's all I have for now on what happened to Thomas Almeida. I appreciate you guys for watching as always. See you in my next video. Peace.